Good morning. It is beautiful to see the room filled with people, filled with God's beloved community. I am glad that you are here. Will you join with me in our responsive call to worship? We are people of God created to love. We love the Lord our God with heart, soul, mind, and strength. We are people of God determined to love. We will love our neighbors and treat them as we would be treated. We love neither from a sense of obligation nor to gain popularity of favor. We choose to love both the lovely and the unlovable because love imitates God's nature. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Timeless God, we thank you for all those before us who have kept the faith to the end. We thank you for the brave souls of deathless fame and also for those whose names are remembered only by you. Give us wisdom to understand your will and courage to live as your people in this day. Through the grace of Jesus Christ, amen. Observing All Saints Sunday. Oops. This is the problem of masks. Before we begin to read the names of some of our dearly be departed, let me also catch you up on a couple other prayer requests. One is that Roger Slezak is in hospital right now. He expects to have an angioplasty today so we keep him in our prayers. Our communications person, Kevin Iriarty, reported that his family experienced some um, racially motivated hate um, yesterday, and so they've asked for prayers. He and his family are Pacific Islanders of origin. Our friend Vita Fisher went home to heaven yesterday morning. We will ring a bell for her and Lane's and my newest grandbaby was born by emergency C-section on Thursday. He is quite early. He is two pounds, 15 ounces, but he and mother are both doing much better now that he is born. So he will stay in hospital until sometime in December. Mom probably will get to go home Monday or Tuesday. So for all of these, we lift them up in our prayers. Today we remember the faithful members of this congregation and this worshiping community who have gone on before us, gone into heaven to dwell with God and whom we celebrate today. We remember the Reverend Dr. Bob Vahey. We remember John Aaron Jack Riddle. We remember Thelma V. Peterson. We remember Mary Lee Nelson. We remember Richard Dick Stuber. We remember Marsha Watt. We remember Vida Fisher.
And one more bell. You remember someone special to you. Will you join me in a responsive prayer of intercession? Our prayer today is for all who are victims of cruel laws and petty laws, those who are subjected to prejudice, denied opportunities, excluded, pushed to margins. The Lord our God is one. We will love with all our heart, all our soul, all our strength. Our prayer today is for all those who are betrayed, who don't know loyalty, who fear to trust or to love, and who don't realize that they're already loved by you. The Lord our God is one. We will love with all our heart, all our soul, all our strength. Our prayer today is for the landless and homeless, the refugee and evicted, those who find themselves in foreign places and strange places. The Lord our God is one. We will, we will love, love with all our heart, heart all our soul, all our, all our strength. strength. Our prayer today is for the overworked and the underpaid, for those in dangerous work and those in compassionate work, for those who long to work but are denied the opportunity. The Lord our God is one. We love, love with all our heart, with all our soul, and all our strength. Our prayer today is for the church, for all the branches of the vine, including this one, we gather as part of today. Body of Christ, people of Christ, for whom the Lord our God is one. We will love, love with, with all, all our heart, heart all our soul, all our strength. Our prayer today is for the creation gifts, this earth and all its mighty wonder, yet tender fragility, the gifts of life and resources to treasure. The Lord our God is one. We will love with all our heart, all our soul, all our strength. Our prayer today is for those who lie close to our hearts, those whom we worry about, those whom we miss, those who carry disproportionate burdens at this time. The Lord our God is one. We will we love, love with all our heart, heart all our soul, all, all our strength. strength. The Lord our God is one. We, we will love, love with all, all our heart, heart all our soul, all, all our strength. strength. The Lord our God is one. We will love with all our heart, all our soul, all our strength. Will you pray with me the prayer that our Lord Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Part of our joy is to bring our gifts to our God. Our gifts of worship, our gifts of prayer, sometimes our gifts of song when we can sing, and our financial gifts, whether you're giving through online or, e or mailing, or whether you're leaving your gift with the usher as you leave to this morning, our God celebrates for the gifts that you bring. Let us sing our doxology with our hands. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. 
Praise God above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. If you want to be able to do all the words, the tutorial is on our website. Now our quintet will offer us beautiful music. Right now they're the only ones really allowed to sing in the room and notice that they will be singing with their masks on, but thank you folks for being here. Mm -hmm. soul 
The scripture today is from Mark 12. One of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with one another. And seeing that Jesus answered them well, he asked him, which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, the first is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Then the scribe said to him, You are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one, and beside him there is no other. And to love him with all the heart and with all the understanding and with all the strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself. This is much more important than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. After that, no one dared ask him any question. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So we're celebrating All Saints Day on All Hallows' Eve. Does that sound a little backwards to you? Let me present to you my excuse. There's only one. That is the Revised Common Lectionary told me to. You know what the Revised Common Lectionary is? It's that schedule, that three-year cycle of scriptures that many, many churches across the globe use to help us read as many of the scriptures as possible in worship over a three-year period. And the Revised Common Lectionary said, this is the day that we're gonna do All Saints Sunday because we have to do other things other times. And sometimes the Gregorian calendar and the Revised Common Lectionary, they run into each other and they um, have awkward things like All Saints Day on All, All Souls Eve morning. But who cares? Halloween's a pagan holiday anyway, isn't it? Right? Except it was a pagan holiday until it wasn't, sort of. You know, nearly 4,000 years ago, long before Christianity became a religion, the Celts were an Indo-European people inhabiting a great portion of Europe. Areas like the British Isles and parts of Spain and France and where Germany now is, Italy and parts of the Middle East. And then 2,000 years ago, the Celts who lived in what is now Great Britain and Northern France celebrated what they called the New Year on November 1st. And they called it, well, it's pronounced, I'm told, Samhain, but it's spelled S-A-M-H-A-I-N. Maybe you've seen that and pronounced it wrong like I did. Um, Samhain is apparently how it's pr pronounced. And that's celebrated on the night before All Saints Day because they expect that the, the border between the dead and the living is somewhat porous at that time and some of the dead will come back and create trouble. And so they have this festival as a way of kind of um, asking, invoking, pleading for protection in the winter that comes ahead. By the year 43, this is between Jesus' death and before the temple is destroyed, by the year 43, the Romans had conquered as far north into Europe as they were going to conquer, and they had been occupying, and they'd been trying to, to get rid of the Celtic celebration of, of Samhain and replacing it with their own Roman holidays, one that honor, honors the dead, and another that honors the goddess of fruit and trees. By the mid seventh century, Christianity is now the official religion of the empire. And one of the, one of the churches, one of the church popes created a holiday on May 13th for remembering the dead. The ones that were specifically martyred in the Colosseum in Rome. And then later another pope 
would move that holiday from May 13 to November 1st and expand its celebration to cover all the saints. By the 9th century, the influence of Christianity had spread so strongly to the Celtic lands that it gradually overtook and replaced the Samhain celebration, the Celtic celebrations. And in 1000 AD, the church made November 2nd All Souls Day. Not just saints, but all souls, every people, to honor the dead. And it's widely believed that the church was trying to just get rid of altogether Samhain, the Celtic pagan holiday. Now, All Souls Day has been celebrated similarly to Samhain, with big bonfires and parades and dressing in costumes of saints and angels and, you know, devils. The All Saints celebration was called All Hallows, or All Hallow Mass, which means, Old English, All Saints Day. Eventually, All Hallows Eve became Halloween. Now, the story of the Day of the Dead, Dia de Muertos, on November 2nd, that we know through our Mexican neighbors, it had a similar origin. It started in the 16th century when the Spanish conquered the Aztec Empire. One of the big commonalities in all those traditions, including our own, is a bit of anxiety about what happens after we die. Do we have souls? Where do our souls go when we die? Go when we die? Can they come back and haunt us or chat with us or visit us? Now, based on the numbers of stories published, the numbers of movies made, the number of children who like to tell ghost stories during campouts, we are thrilled by these ghostly stories. We're also terrified, and sometimes we're thrilled to be terrified. But when the thrill has passed, we still have the same questions, and we still want some real answers. Now, in the United Methodist Church, we have memorial services, we have funeral services, or at least we use those words, memorial and funeral, to describe what we're doing. But officially, in our book of worship, the services are called services of death and resurrection. We honor our departed loved ones with services of death and resurrection. Death is real. Grief is difficult. But we also proclaim our confidence in eternity through the resurrection. First, the resurrection of Jesus, and then ultimately, our own resurrection. And maintaining the traditions of All Saints Day, ringing bells, lighting candles, comes hand in hand with Halloween of ghosts and goblins and jack-o'-lanterns, and it's all part of our proclamation that we believe. It's all part of our confidence in the God who sustains us and who gives us life, who gives us eternal life. That means today we can truly celebrate. We can truly celebrate that the loved ones who will be in the video thing that we skipped, that I skipped, and that we won't skip altogether, that the loved ones who have gone on before us are in the good hands of our loving God. Not just friends and relatives, but all the saints who have gone on before us and leaders over the years who have influenced us, including people from throughout history. You know, Martin Luther King Jr. and Mother Teresa and St. Francis of Assisi and, and um, Teresa of Avila and, and all kinds of other good people, the Apostle Paul and the disciples, Moses. All those people who have gone on before us, faithful ones who believed and loved God as we do, who are our role models and our examples. We can give God thanks for their former presence in our lives and for all the way they provided their love and their mentoring and their, their role modeling and every good thing that they gave us that influenced us and made us who we are today. As we remember them, we are reminded that we are not alone today. We have companions who are still with us, who still light the way and who still direct our paths. 
Remembering the saints of our lives also reminds us that we are companions to whom others look. Others look to us for support and encouragement and guidance and role modeling. After all, we are now, you and I, the living saints, actively moving toward and building up the kingdom of God, are we not? You and I. As people who profess to follow the Christ, that is what others expect of us. And, and they're watching to see whether we behave like that, whether we have something to show for the fact that we are building up the body of Christ, that we are building up the kingdom of God. According to Jesus, we have everything to show, or rather everything we have and do shows. Are we showing the right stuff? That's what Jesus tells us through this week's scripture reading. They're in the middle of a squabble. You know, the Herodians and the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they're all arguing over something. And most of all, they're trying to trip up Jesus and they're trying to see who can do it first. It's the only reason they're even working together because they don't like each other. And meanwhile, the scribe slides in along the side and he sees how brilliant Jesus is and how well he's answering his tormentors and so the scribe scribe who's a lawyer basically in the church he knows the church law he has a question and one that he truly wants an answer for and he wants to see what Jesus says Jesus which commandment is first which one is number one which one is the most important of the 613 commandments in the scriptures he doesn't actually say the number, but 613, that's how many there are. 613 mitzvot, commandments, responsibilities, obligations that we have. Which one is the most important? And Jesus responds by saying the Shema, which is a foundational statement in Jewish life. It is so important that children learn how to say it almost before they learn how to speak any other sentence. It's so foundational that people write it in little tiny scripts and put it in boxes along every door frame to the front of their house or to the front of their hotel room throughout Israel. They can even wear it in boxes on their arms and on their forehead. Jesus recites the Shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind and all your strength. And then Jesus continues. The second is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Now the scribe that asked him the question, he's ecstatic because inside his heart he knew this was the answer. He had read it in the scriptures himself. He's one of the few people of his era who can actually read and he had read it for himself in the book of Deuteronomy and those words. They're not quite exactly the same in Deuteronomy as what the gospel writer Mark reports. The gospel writer Mark talks about four different, you know, um, dimensions of love, you know, heart and soul and mind and strength. Deuteronomy only has three, heart and soul and might. But if you know anything about the difference between Gentiles and Jews, the Greek Gentiles and the Jewish Jews, you understand that Jews, for Jews, the, the emotions and the intellect and all of that, they're centered in the heart. But for the Greeks, Emotions and intellect are like almost in two different bodies. They don't go together. And Mark wants to be sure that the people who are reading his gospel, he wants to be sure that they know that everything, it's all together, it all goes together. You love God with all of that. Your commitment to God is so whole, it's so full that you can't say, well, just love with your emotions and not your mind, or just love with your mind and not your emotions. It's all together, and he wanted his readers to hear it. And so he said, all three, all four, heart, soul, might, and strength. For the scribe to hear Jesus affirm what the scribe already knew in his heart felt wonderful. And so he responds to Jesus, teacher, you are right. You have truly said that God is one, and beside him there is no other. 
and to love him with all the heart and with all the understanding and with all the strength and to love neighbor as oneself. This is more important than all the whole offerings and sacrifices. Again, Jesus affirms him telling the scribe, you are not far from the kingdom of God. Wouldn't you just love to hear Jesus say that to you? You are not far from the kingdom of God. Wouldn't that just feel awful if Jesus personally said that to you? In fact, Jesus has told us that's why he came. He came to seek all of those who are far away and to bring them near. We want to be near. We, we want to know that we are close to the kingdom of God. We want to be close to hope. We want to be close to a model of living the way we are supposed to live. And more than that, we want to be close to a model of living the way we long to live. We want to be what Jesus wants us to be. And to get that close, we have to live full out. We can't hold back. We can't keep something in reserve. We can't worry about offending someone. We can't worry about being shocking or thinking inconveniently or anything like that. We have to live full out. We must love, 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 love with heart and soul and mind and strength. God, neighbor, self. That's the only thing that Jesus wants from us. Everything. And Jesus will say to us, you are not far from the kingdom of God. Draw nearer still. Come. You're invited and welcomed and loved. There is room for you and others who you invite to come near also. There is room and you are welcomed. So today we're going to feast with the saints. Before we do, let's, let's view some of the saints, some of our beloved ones.
Maybe that special vibration is the ghost speaking to us. Because it's only today that we've had that, right? Ghosts are good on Halloween Day. Today we feast with those saints, those who are pictured on the screen and those who went before them too. Once they helped us draw near. Now we draw near and we seek to be the kind that would encourage others to come near. Christ has invited you, so come. In your hearts, come. We're going to ask you not to leave your seat for Holy Communion. When you came in, hopefully you received a cup. With your elements in it, if you need, if you did not get some, raise your hand and an usher will bring some to you. If you're worshiping at home, this is your chance to go and get something to serve as an element. Your, your cup has two layers of to peel off. One will open for the bread and one will open for the cup. Um, don't get too far ahead of yourself until we're done singing our liturgy and we will eat to, and drink together, okay? And then in the end, all of your stuff goes in here and you can take it out the door and drop it in the can when you leave. Would you like to sing? Yes. So if you're at home, just belt it out. But if you're in the room, try to be modest in your singing so that we don't put too much stuff into the air for all of us. We're going to try to be as safe as we can while we still get back into the full feeling of worshiping together. For the liturgy, we're going to sing um, one that this congregation knows well. It's a sung liturgy. I will sing parts of it, and then you'll repeat some of it back to me. For the communion table, if I were at home today, I would be eating tea, like my granny and I used to do, and um, crescent rolls. We would, you know those refrigerator crescent rolls? We would roll those up and bake those and eat those, yum yum. So I have tea and crescent rolls. On the night you were betrayed, you took the bread. After giving thanks, you broke it and said, This is my body, broken for you. And as you eat it, remember me. This is my body, broken for you. And as you eat it, remember me. On the night you were betrayed, you took the cup. After giving thanks, you lifted it up. This is my love poured out for you. And as you drink it, remember me. This is my love poured out for you. And as you drink it, remember me. So we thank you for the cup and for the bread. For we see the life you gave, the life you led. And we remember your wondrous love. You gave your spirit to live in us. And we remember your wondrous love. We gave your spirit to live in us. Eat and be thankful.
in all our weakness and strength, with our youth-filled spirits and our aging bodies, we desire to be your people, O oh God. Strong in faith and eager with questions, singing our, your praises and whispering our prayers. We desire to be your people, O oh God. Filled with saintly determination, yet mindful of our human limitations. Made strong in your endless love for us, we know ourselves to be yours, and we desire to be your people, O oh God. May we truly become your people today, tomorrow, and always. Amen. Thank you.